So in this lesson, we're going to look at how radicals can add and what the rules are with adding and subtracting radicals. Um, one of the earliest examples of this comes from just kind of a classic question that if I have a square um, with, that is 1 on each side, what is the length of the diagonal of that square? Well, this goes back to a larger concept, one that you probably are familiar with, the Pythagorean theorem, that in a right triangle, um, the sum of the squares of the legs, which are the two sides adjacent to the right, right angle, is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared in a right triangle. So given that, if I do a substitution, and let's let this diagonal here be c, um, if I do a substitution, I would get uh, 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to c squared, um, which means that c squared would be equal to 2, or c would be equal to the square root of 2. would not be equal to the negative, because I'm talking about a side length. Um, so radicals themselves um, can come into to many plays here, but the, uh, the sum of the squares equal to the other side means, let's call this number 1, if I were to give a problem like this, um, this is not drawn to scale, where I say that this length is 15, this length is uh, root 4, <laughs> that's silly, root 5, um, and let's call this an x, and this is a right triangle, I could use this same theorem and say that, well, x squared plus root 5 squared is equal to uh, 15 squared. This should give me x squared plus 5 is equal to 225. Oops. Or x squared is equal to 220. And x would be equal to the square root of 220. Uh, which if I simplify that by dividing through by a 4, 220 is equal to 4 times uh, 54. I believe. Hang on, I am nope four and um, fifty-five. That's better. I don't know why I was doing that. Uh, which would be equal to two root fifty-five. Uh, fifty-five is made up of five and eleven, and neither of those can be simplified. So <clears throat> let's do some examples with just more classic adding up of straight-up radicals. So um, if I had root three and I wanted to add the cubed root of 3, uh, what would I do? Well, I actually can't do anything. And I can't do anything because they are a different index, which means they're not really like terms. So that's out. All right, let's do another one that we can actually do. Uh, root 3 plus root 6. JK, you can't add those because those are different radicands. So that's out. Um, let's do... Another one, let's do root 7 plus 3 over root 3. All right, I don't know if we can add these. Well, I do know, but you, you, you wouldn't know if we can add these unless you actually took the time to rationalize this 3 over root 7 by multiplying it by root 7 over root 7. And if you do that, you're going to get root 7 plus 3 root 7 over 7. Now, this number, if I actually think about this, and I were to put this in parentheses and factor the root 7 out, that's the same as 1 plus 3 sevenths times root 7. Uh, think about the root 7 as being a greatest common factor. You don't always have to treat it this way, um, but this is truly what's going on. 1 plus 3 sevenths is 10 sevenths, and this would be 10 sevenths times root 7, which would probably be written as 10 root 7 over 7. Uh, but typically what you're going to do with a problem like that is just do an LCD of 7 and then add 7 root 7 plus 3 root 7 all over 7 uh, to get the same thing. So continuing on, um, let's look at an example that is more cubed roots. So 2 cubed root of 9 plus cubed root of 81 plus 2 times the cubed root of one-third. So we needed to try to simplify each of these parts. Well, 2 cubed root of 9 can't be simplified. Cubed root of 81, 81 is 27 times 3, and the cubed root of 27 is uh, 3. Or I can think of 81 as 3 to the fourth, and I'm taking a cubed root. So I get 3 cubed root of 3 when I simplify that. 
And then 2 cubed root of 1 third is the same as 2 times the cubed root of 1 over the cubed root of 3. Well, the cubed root of 1 is just 1, so this really becomes just 2 over the cubed root of 3. And I, again, have to rationalize that. Um, I have to multiply by a cubed root over a cubed root. And the number I would need to multiply by would be a 3 squared, um, because I need three 3's here to get out of the cubed root. So if I bring this together and keep going, I get 2 cubed root of 9 plus 3 cubed root of 3 plus 2 cubed root of 9 divided by 3. And my like terms in this situation are this term and this term. They both have a cubed root of 9. If I treat it as 2 and 2 thirds, 2 plus 2 thirds is 8 thirds. So this would be 8 cubed root of 9 over 3 uh, plus that remaining 3 cubed root of 3. And if I want to finalize this by adding these all with an LCD of 3, uh, which I could have done in the previous step, but I like to do it here, um, I'd get 8 cubed root of 9 plus 9 cubed root of 3 all over 3. Okay, next one. Let's do one with some fractions underneath radicals. Radical 4 thirds minus radical 6 over radical 2 minus 4 over radical, or 4 radical 2 over radical 6. So this is an example of where it may make more sense in some cases to split up the radicals, like the first fraction could become radical 4 over radical 3. But the second case, it might make sense to bring them together. Radical 6 over 2 minus 4, and then bring that together, radical 2 over 6. Um, because splitting this first one up gives me 2 over root 3 minus, the second one is just root 3 minus, and this would be 4 over root 3. Um, which, before I do anything with that, I can notice that those are, in fact, like terms. So if I get 2 over root 3 minus 4 over root 3, that gives me negative 2 over root 3. And I still have this minus root 3 here. I like to rationalize before we do anything. So let's rationalize uh, this part here uh, by multiplying by root 3 over root 3 to give me negative 2 root 3 over 3. That's minus root 3. And then let's do a least common denominator of 3 in order to add those. If you don't see that there, it's, neg it's really negative 2 thirds minus 1, but if I want to do an LCD of 3, negative 2 root 3 minus 3 root 3 all over 3, or negative 5 root 3 all over 3. Sometimes you're going to have to anticipate, whoop, I was off my numbering a little bit, 3, 4, this should be 5. Sorry, you probably noticed this a while ago. This should be 6. This should be 7. And so this one here is 8. Um, let's say that I have the fifth root of 10 plus the fifth root of 250, and I divide it by the fifth root of 2. Well, a lot of times people are going to take this and multiply by the fifth root of 2 to the fourth because we need to rationalize, but I should notice that both of these are divisible by, by that. If I break up this fraction and I get the fifth root of 10 over the fifth root of 2 uh, plus the fifth root of 250 over the fifth root of 2, then I know that really when I divide with the same index uh, of radicals, that's the same thing as the fifth root of 10 halves plus the fifth root of 250 over 2, which is the fifth root of 5 plus the fifth root of 125. And 125 is really equal to 5 to the third power, so there's no perfect fifth in there, and this would be done. You can have a problem like this uh, with variables where you have z cubed root 60z plus 2z squared root 135z cubed. So if you really don't know what to do, start with a prime factorization of each of these numbers. 60 is prime factorization. 60 breaks up into 4 and 15. So 4 is 2 squared, 15 is 3, and 5, and a z, plus 
2z squared, 135, let's break that up, uh, 5 and 27, and 27 is 3 cubed, so this gives me, um, let's see, this gives me 3 cubed times 5 times a z cubed. So that was just a first step, of taking these whole numbers and factoring them so I know what's going on. Now let's look at what kind of radical it is. I can take the 2 squared out as a 2 z cubed roots. Let's bring that together as 15 z plus. I can take the 3 cubed out and the z cubed out. Uh, 3 cubed comes out as a 3, which multiplies by the 2 to give me a 6. z cubed comes out as a z, which multiplies that to give me a z cubed. Then I still have a 3 and a z left in, and a 5, this gives me 15z. Um, and now these are like terms, truly. Uh, they match in everything. 2z cubed, 15z, plus 6z cubed, root 15z, is equal to 8z cubed, root 15z. And that's done. I'll pause here for a second. Oh, I think we're done.